Hello, I'm Karen Daly, and it's my privilege to serve as the Executive Director of your National Headquarters and Museum at Dumbarton House. I'll be sharing with you all today a presentation titled Preservation and Patriotic Philanthropy, originally given to the Dumbarton House Board yesterday, April 6th. As some of you know, my connection, my personal connection to history dates back to my own childhood when my school teacher mom and American history buff dad dragged my sister and me to places like Valley Forge and Colonial Williamsburg on vacation while our friends were off enjoying water parks and roller coasters. Here we are in front of the fort in St. Augustine, uh, quite an unfortunate photo really from the uh, late 80s, early 90s, I think. Um, it was a very hot day in St. Augustine, Florida. I was lucky enough to continue my education at the College of William & Mary, one of the most historic college campuses in our nation. And then coming to Washington, D.C. for graduate school, I fell in love with our national monuments, memorials, and museums, and quite appropriately with a high school history teacher named Charles. Today, Chuck and I enjoy introducing our own children, Maggie, who's now five, and Joe, who's four, to American history through our own National Park and History-themed vacations, a few of which you see here. Manassas Battlefield, uh, Guilford Courthouse in North Carolina, the Rosa Parks Montgomery Bus Boycott, um, and George Mason right here on the Tidal Basin, um, because of course all families visit George Mason on New Year's Eve. <laughs> um, so I say sincerely as a preservation professional, as a woman, and as a mother that it is a great privilege to serve the National Society of the Colonial Dames of America, a women's organization at the forefront of the preservation movement in our country for the past 125 years, working to save historic sites throughout the country and artifacts that tell our American history uh, to inspire and educate future generations. Over the next um, few minutes, I'll be talking to you a bit about preservation and patriotic philanthropy, exploring ways we're working to build a sustainable business plan to support our preservation and patriotic service mission in the 21st century. I'll start by looking at the roots of our preservation mission. To quickly put this in context, I think it's always important to remember that the Mount Vernon's Ladies Association, just down the road a bit here in Virginia, organized the very first preservation effort in our nation in 1860. A decade and a half later, in 1876, the Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia, the first World's Fair, ignited a national resurgence of interest in our colonial roots. And just 15 years later, our own National Society for the Colonial Dames of America would be formed by a committed group of Pennsylvania ladies in April of 1891. Just five years after the organization was founded, the New York Dames would be managing Van Cortlandt House, the first preservation project of the new NSCDA. And ladies, it would be another 40 years, 40 years after the National Society of the Colonial Dames of America got started, before the preservation and restoration efforts at the iconic Colonial Williamsburg would begin. When we say that the Dames were at the forefront of the preservation movement, we are sincere. The new National Society of the Colonial Dames of America became active in preservation very quickly after their founding in 1891. We see here the restoration and really rebuilding of the Jamestown Church, which was done in 1907 for the tricentennial celebrations in Jamestown, and the dedication of a canopy over Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts in 1921. Patriotic efforts played a major role in the early days of the National Society as well, of course, as dames looked for ways to give back to the nation. On the upper left, you see the Spanish-American War Memorial, the first memorial erected by a women's group within Arlington National Cemetery. On the upper right, you see one of the hospital ships that monies were raised for to support from the dames to support in World War I. And in the middle, we see an effort uh, to support new citizens that was quite popular by the dames in the early days. This particular effort, taken from a page in our archives, called artists throughout the nation to create posters encouraging literacy. It was a project conducted in um, 
partnership with the Department of Education and the Department of Interior, and the posters were distributed throughout the country um, to encourage learning English and speaking English and, and literacy amongst new immigrants. By 1927, the National Society had grown up, but still did not have a national headquarters. This is Joseph Rucker Lamar, who you see here on the left, a Georgia Society member and a former National Society president, was chairing the headquarters committee. And she writes in her history of the society, quote, in 1927, the National Society was 36 years old. And during that long period, it had done some notable things, though none of them for itself. And so in 1928, the headquarters committee chaired by Mrs. Lamar find um, and decide to purchase Dumbarton House, which you see on the right. This was an incredible feat for the ladies to acquire Dumbarton House to serve as their national headquarters. Uh, it was still fairly unusual for women to purchase property independent from their husbands during this period. Uh, what's more, the National Society was not yet incorporated in the District of Columbia, and because of the laws at the time, it couldn't be, except by a formal act of Congress. And so Mrs. Lamar and two other early dames, Mrs. Andrews and Miss Jennings, personally had to sign the note to acquire the house for the society. Even further, Dumbarton House was not on the market when the ladies started to look at it. Mrs. Lamar writes, quote, at the time of purchase, Bellevue, as it was then named, was listed in the realtor's office at $225,000, and the owner did not care to sell it. But when the committee explained the purpose for which the society wished to buy it, she was attracted by the idea and agreed to consider an offer. Amazingly, um, not only was Mrs. Lamar persuasive enough to convince the owner to sell, but she sold below market value for $185,000. And in 1928, on the cusp of the Great Depression, the dames raised the full $185,000 to fully pay off that mortgage within two years, taking full title to the home from the bank in 1930. Then, as if that wasn't enough, they set out to fully restore it under the guidance of noted local architect Horace Peasley and nationally renowned architect Fisk Kimball, who was then the director of the Philadelphia Museum of Art. From day one, the use of the house to educate and serve the public was made known. Mrs. Lamar wrote, quote, the society should acquire an old historic house in Washington City and maintain it as a museum or educational center for the collection, care, and display of Americana to be open to the public so that it might worthily illustrate the character and the objects of the society. And that, ladies, is a charge all of us today still work to achieve, to worthily illustrate at Dumbarton House the character of the society. Those first 50 years or so were incredibly active and visible ones for the NSCDA. Tea with the First Lady, frequent mentions in the society pages of the papers, and even congressional action to establish Dumbarton House's property tax exemption here in Washington, D.C. And then, while the good work of the society continued, and in fact grew in many ways, the dames become much, became much more quiet about their public work. Now, as we approached and then entered the 21st century, a new generation of visionary leaders, both nationally and here at Dumbarton House, set out ambitious plans to more actively support our members and corporate societies throughout the country, to more fully engage and serve the public, and as a result, to raise the visibility and stature of the NSCDA, to honor the legacy of those dames who came before. The 1990s brought a new era to Dumbarton House with the Centennial Campaign, chaired by Delaware Dames Joe Osmond and Louise Bonassisi, National Society President Marcy Moody, excuse me, Honorary President Marcy Moody wrote that one of her fondest memories of Dumbarton House goes back to 1990-92 during this campaign. Quote, I clearly remember touring the site when the future Bellevue Room was a mud pit, which you see here and then returning for the biennial when the house was reopened and the Bellevue Room was unveiled in all its splendor, completing its metamorphosis from mud pit to lovely meeting space. These memories are particularly dear to me because I was with my mother both times. She was a lady of Dumbarton and helpful to this transformation, and I was her tag-along new dame daughter, 
I was very impressed at what she and her cohorts had accomplished. Then the 2010 NSCDA strategic plan set forth a goal to establish a new brand for the Colonial Dames. Shepherded by Virginia Dame Liz Foreman, the NSCDA Branding Committee contracted nationally recognized branding expert Kelly O'Keefe, whose team developed a brand purpose and visual identity that honors the long legacy of the organization founded in 1891 that emphasizes the three mission focus areas of preservation, patriotic service, and education in the three stars of the logo, and that signals the forward momentum and focus on the future of the organization with that final swoosh in the A in NSCDA. These branding recommendations also emphasized the critical need for our preservation work in the 21st century as we become further and further removed from our founding. As you see here in the slide from that branding presentation, they wrote the NSCDA, uh, for the NSCDA, keeping history alive is about more than keeping artifacts alive. It is about keeping the values and ideals of the people from colonial history relevant in a modern and changing world. But, as they acknowledge here, with every generation, history seems to get farther away, dulling our connection to the past and making it harder to pass on the lessons to others. But the branding team found that the NSCDA is well equipped for this challenge. You see here some of the NSCDA's incredible resources, the remarkable group of owned and managed properties throughout the country, the meticulously preserved collections and detailed record keeping, the army of dedicated members, 15,000 plus strong across the nation, the proven ability to support and inspire students and new citizens and visitors, and a combined reach truly of millions through our properties, education, websites, and outreach efforts. At Dumbarton House, we can and do attempt to advance this mission daily. And we turned from NSCDA branding to Dumbarton House branding, where the recommendations focused on embracing our preservation activities as a key focal point of our public interpretation. You see here on the slide from the Dumbarton House branding presentation on the left, our hope for the country's history to remain alive and be remembered, and the goal of the NSCDA on the right to continue and perpetuate and protect and care for that history, which led the branders to give us a, a core of our branding identity as living preservation. This living preservation is our brand purpose. It talks about how it represents living preservation, the opportunity to become a living, breathing, modern example of excellent preservation and its importance, and the charge to enter the preservation conversation as a leader in halting the, dec the decline of public history. To bring that brand to life at Dumbarton House, we're focusing on three converging stories, the story of the NSCDA, champions of our country's early history, the story of early DC, and the story of preservation and the rise of the preservation movement. And we're working to become a center for supporting preservation through shared knowledge and experience. And we see here a number of specific recommendations that the branding team gave us. At Dumbarton House Now, we embrace a tagline of the story of courage, preservation, and the rise of a nation. We are, in fact, much more than a house. We are a story. The courage of the NSCDA made Dumbarton House possible. Preservation is our focus, and the story of early DC and America's ascent is at our core. This long-standing focus on preservation and patriotic service and renewed commitment from the NSCDA seem perfectly aligned with a trend in the philanthropic community sparked by our local um, founder of the Carlisle Group here in, in, Wash in the Washington area, David Rubenstein. Rubenstein, who has spoken here at Dumbarton House at the invitation of the DC Society, as well as, of course, on 60 Minutes and in a number of other public venues, he speaks openly about his feeling of responsibility and obligation to give back to the country that had given, has given him so much. 
And here you see a few of his recent projects. Um, he uh, tends to support very visible um, endeavors of, of national significance. On the left is the Washington Monument, which um, he helped to fund the repair work on after our uh, very unusual earthquake here in Washington, D.C. Um, in the center there, we see the beginnings of the rebuilding of the uh, slave cabins at Mount Pelier, James Madison's home in Virginia, which he's underwriting after having um, already underwritten uh, the creation of a new visitor center for them to tell the story of Madison and the Constitution. And at the bottom, we see um, Arlington House, the Lee family home at, uh, situated today in Arlington National Cemetery, uh, which he has funded restoration work at. While the term patriotic philanthropy, uh, coined by Rubenstein, may be quite recent, I would really argue that the dames have been practicing patriotic philanthropy from our very earliest history, uh, 125 years ago, really. Here at Dumbarton House, then, today, we're working with National Society leaders, many of whom... Um, are here with us today at the meetings to develop a sound business plan to sustain our preservation and patriotic service mission. Um, so what, what goes into this business plan for the National Society? Um, of course, besides getting to know David Rubenstein a little bit better. Um, well, in, in any solid business plan, of course, we have to focus on diversified income streams. And so that is certainly the case um, uh, here at, at the NSCDA. So uh, first, one of the things that we are attempting to do is to provide quality products and services that people are willing to, um, to pay to attend. Um, we see in the center of the screen here um, an example, our Jane Austen Film Fest at Dumbarton House, very uh, successful annual film fest in the summers that moved to a ticketed program last year and sold out very quickly. Uh, we see on the right another opportunity uh, for earned revenue, um, our rental event business. This is a wedding. Uh, you can see the bridal party lined up in our lower passage of the museum getting ready uh, to process out uh, to the back garden for the ceremony. Um, and then you also see in the lower left uh, some photos from our new travel program uh, just launched by the NSCDA. Uh, of course, a diversified um, income stream and a business plan also includes encouraging contributions, donations from individuals, and the development of a major gift program. It includes building corporate sponsorships and corporate support, uh, building a healthy endowment, and seeking and applying for grant funding. You see uh, the logos here on the screen of some of our recent grant funders, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and over on the right, the National Endowment for the Humanities, uh, which of course we are so grateful uh, too, for having um, supported our HVAC replacement to the tune of a $300,000 grant this year. In addition, we are working to build our museum members and support from the community, as well as looking into uh, fundraising campaigns and compre a comprehensive campaign, which you'll hear about a bit more in our next presentation. And so our work here at the National Society and at Dumbarton House has really um, become kind of cyclical as we've gotten better at embracing and sharing our brand with the world, um, with our supporters and with the general public, we've become more successful raising funds. And raising more funds means we can further uh, share that brand and expand our mission reach um, to, to reach more people and support more people. Uh, we see here on the screen some of our recent patriotic service efforts uh, within the national organization. On the upper right, uh, scholarship recipients, um, the lower center uh, is an example of a National History Day student uh, supported by one of our corporate societies. Um, in the middle of the screen, we see our high school students visiting Dumbarton House during the Washington Workshops Congressional Seminar Program and in the summer, which brings high schoolers to Washington to uh, learn about civic engagement uh, and government. Uh, and then a number of pictures, three here on the screen, that show a, a citizenship ceremony held at your national headquarters, um, welcoming new, uh, new citizens' children um, who are taking the oath um, of citizenship here in your national headquarters. 
We have also uh, begun to take our first steps to realize our living preservation brand purpose at Dumbarton House, showcasing our preservation efforts on social media and receiving grant funding to support our work. Uh, you see here on the screen um, restoration of our front portico, which was uh, completed last year and supported through a grant from the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities. Uh, you see plaster restoration work on the bottom center, uh, work on the left to uh, test um, and analyze the historic paint on the facade of the building, which was a project supported by the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and uh, craftsmen on the right who's scraping and re, um, restoring the stairs in the lower passage of the museum before our carpet is was reinstalled was installed. Uh, some additional projects: uh, window restoration efforts just con conducted and completed this year. You see the house with the windows removed and out for conservation. Um, and then our HVAC replacement, which you see in some of the pictures there on the right, um, just about finished uh, this month at Dumbarton House. This HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning uh, project, uh, forced us to close as the work was going on at the museum and historic site. And that closure provided a perfect opportunity for us to launch preservation in action programs. So you see here, um, of course, the staff team at Dumbarton House with little marketing photo with us all with uh, construction hats on, hard hats. And then you see some actual hard hat tours going on in the museum. We invited uh, visitors, neighbors, uh, colleagues at other museums to tour the to tour the historic site while the work was going on. Um, and so you see us in, in the museum in the storage, uh, the collection storage area with hard hats on. And on the right, you see uh, some of the craftsmen working on the window restoration project, reinstalling the windows as we were touring to learn more about the process. We've also, um, we also were able to schedule an external tour, a tour of the uh, studio, the, the warehouse and um, studio where the windows are being restored. You see that um, on the left there in a social media excerpt. Um, and on the right, you see uh, some marketing for our upcoming programs as we reopen. We'll continue the preservation in action pro projects and programs and showcase some of the reinstallation of our historic rooms. Um, so you can come and see the looking glasses being reinstalled the dressing of the bed, the setting of the dining room table. We've begun publicizing this work, certainly to raise our, our visibility, but more importantly, really, to contribute to the field and begin to serve as a true resource in preservation issues for our community um, of dames, neighbors, and colleagues. Um, and you see here our own blog posts on the left about uh, some of the preservation work going on at Dumbarton House. And on the right, uh, some wonderful coverage in the National Trust for Historic Preservation's Saving Places blog. Uh, the National Trust sent staff to uh, tour on one of our behind the scenes tours and uh, then to attend a presentation by uh, Dr. Jerry Faust, our Collections and Facilities Manager on staff. Um, and they published a wonderful um, article in the blog about the work going on at Dumbarton House. At the national level, the NSCDA is also embracing this theme of living preservation, placing the Colonial Dames back into the national conversations around preservation. Last month, the organization published a public statement in support of the National Endowment for the Humanities, the Institute for Museum and Library Services, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, the National Museum Properties Committee, as you may have heard, is working really hard on establishing a National Museum Alliance, working together with all of our museums across the country to raise visibility. And the National Society will be a sponsor of the American Association for State and Local History annual conference being held this September uh, down in Austin, Texas. The, um, National Society will host a museum staff roundtable for staff of our museum properties across the country in Austin uh, immediately following the AASLH conference. And so this sponsorship will allow the NSCDA to be visible and public um, at this important professional meeting uh, down in Austin. Additionally, talks are currently underway to develop a Women in Preservation Symposium to highlight both the historic significance and current leadership of women within the preservation field. And uh, current conversations with the Smithsonian have uh, seemed fruitful and they are um, 
tentatively on board to co-sponsor a Women in Preservation Symposium coming uh, in the days ahead. So keep your eyes out for that. These are ambitious plans underway, uh, ladies, at your National Society. And as a member recently said at one of our national meetings, this isn't your grandmother's colonial dames. Uh, on, on the one hand, I agree with that sentiment. Of course, certainly, this is a national society that's evolving. It's evolving to remain relevant and to thrive into the 21st century and beyond. But I believe completely that uh, your predecessors, Mrs. Lamar and all those others who came before, would be proud to see the way that you're carrying forth the objects of the society today in 2017. And ultimately, really, it's these dames, all granddaughters of current members, who will inherit the legacy of your work today. What a tremendous legacy we have inherited, ladies, from those dames who have gone before us. What will your legacy be to offer these dames tomorrow. Thank you.